Good morning and welcome to Superb Spine, the part 2. So we'll start exactly from the point where we left last time, right? So this was the point where we finished last time, right? So today we'll be watching these structures plus more about the spine. So here is very quickly, right? This one is what anterior longitudinal ligament, correct? This one and this one was the posterior longitudinal ligament. We'll actually watch them, right? The dissection part. And these are the two, two joints, right? So the costovertebral, so this is costovertebral and this one would be the costo transverse joint. So these are the two joints and rest of the ligaments, this one and this one. This was costo transverse, right? So this was costo transverse ligament. And we said that there is superior inferior, right? So let's say this is say inferior because superior will be above it. And the smaller one, this is also costo transverse, but this one will be the lateral costo transverse ligament. This is what we discussed last time. Let's move further. Right? Now today what we'll do, we'll see, we'll be watching the graphics, we'll be watching the real dissection. So that's how we'll proceed. Let's take a look at the sideways, right from here, from the lateral aspect when we really see this one is of interest. This is spine, correct? This is spine. This is also spine. So in between two, in between two, so we'll call this as interspinous ligament, right? So that is fine. This is real dissection, right? Keep comparing. So here it is. This one is interspinous ligament. Similarly, this one, this one is interspinous ligament. Similarly, this one is interspinous ligament and that's our spine, right? That's the spine of the vertebra. This one is spine. See how they really look like, okay? Let's see one more thing. This is on the spine, right? Now, this is, so for the, for the better perspective, Keep and halt on this figure and watch this. Watch this. This one would be much easier. So this one is interspinous ligament. Right? Interspinous ligament. Because these are the spines. Right? These are the spine. That's the spine of vertebra. That's the spine of the vertebra. What we are interested is, is this. This something which is over here right and that is on the spine on the spine right this one so we'll call it supra supraspinous ligament supraspinous ligament so this one right this one or we can say this one that is supraspinous now see when we watch this how it makes sense this is spine, this one is spine, and on the spine, on the back, right, this is, this green color is supraspinous ligament. So we watched two ligaments, one was interspinous and second is yeah, it will come. It'll, because we give general anesthesia in spine. Okay. So normally, the general anesthesia, in, in the it is the spinal anesthesia which is given in spine. Right? It is called as the spinal anesthesia. Achha. So far, all good. Now, this one is very typical. This is where we have cut the lamina. Right? So here is the body, right? And that's how it looks like, 
right? So if we really cut over here, right? If we cut it like this, we cut put a cut over here, right? So the laminas they are cut. <clears throat> so via vertebral foramen we watch. This is internal. This is this is what we are watching. This part. It is this part which we are watching. Right? And this structure, right, which is which is yellowish structure, right? That is called as the ligamentum. Ligamentum clavum. Clavum. Clavum stands for flame, something which is yellow, right? So this is the word for flame and that means it is yellow, right? Now you can see that that it is it is yellow. The reason behind be, it being yellow is it is due to it has got yellow fibrous elastic tissue, right? So this is because of yellow fibrous elastic tissue. That's why it looks like yellow. So far, all good, right? So what you are watching, this is the front of the vertebra, right? Front of the vertebra. Uh, just a minute, huh? let me orient it properly. Right? Let me orient it properly so that we watch this. Ha. Huh. Okay, let let me draw this again. See, this is vertebral body. Uh -huh. Now, now it will be more clear. Right? When I drew it, like so, we we cut it over here, and we are watching this part once. So this is front of the vertebra. This is this is front, right? It was my mistake first. No, because over here so it will be the posterior longitudinal ligament so we are talking about this part right this is anterior this is posterior we are removing this front of the vertebra and we are watching like this right so these are the transverse process kept intact and spine would be posteriorly so this is the transverse process this one is the transverse process and that's where we are watching so we have cut the body Right, and removed it. So we are watching from the front. We are watching from the front. So that way actually we will be watching the posterior part, posterior part of the vertebral foramen. Right? Am I clear? Right. See this is from the side. Right? So here the there would be spine. Right? These are the transverse process and that's ligamentum. Flavum. Right. That's the body. This is the, the body removed. This is the foramen. And area of interest that is what you are watching is this. This is the location of ligamentum flavum. This one. Hmm. Uh, it is. Uh, Mean spinal, you mean to say spinal cord? Yes, right? Spinal cord would be here, right? If you are telling that spine, spine, the whole thing is spine, right? But this would be the location of spinal cord. Ha, huh, I got it, right? So that would be the spinal cord, right? So this would be the anterior and this one is the posterior. So it would be behind the spinal cord, right? Okay, now this is easy. This is when everything is intact, right? All intact and we are, without cutting anything, we are just watching from the anterior aspect. And that's why this one is our anterior longitudinal, longitudinal ligament, right? Orientation like this, this, right? This, if it is like this, we are watching this part. This is anterior, right? So that's why this is like anterior longitudinal ligament. Because it is attached to the upper and lower 
lips of the vertebral body. So that's the vertebral body and that's how all the way it is connected. Right? Here it is. Right? If we see this, this is anterior longitudinal ligament. Right? Okay. Yeah, just another angle. Right? Another angle. When we watch from the side, these are the vertebral bodies. Right? These are the vertebral body. That's the body. In between is this is the intervertebral disc. Right? And that's our that's our anterior longitudinal ligament. Fair enough. Hmm. So as we proceed further, now we have staked vertebras one over the another. So what we are watching over here is because that's the part which will be going for the dissection. So as we watch it over here, this is the vertebral vertebral foramen. Right? That's the vertebral foramen through which the spinal cord will pass. And yes, this would be the site for posterior longitudinal because over here, right, if we, if we draw it over here, this was the site for anterior longitudinal, anterior longitudinal ligament. This was the site, this is, right, which, which is like this, will, this posteriorly, right, that one would be for ligamentum plavum, and it is this location that one would be the posterior longitudinal ligament correct and this here would be the spinal cord that would be for the spinal cord Okay, so this is how the structures are. And now, now see, these are the intervertebral foramen. These areas, right, these are, these areas, they will be of our great, great interest because spinal nerves will be coming out of it, right. Now, over here in this, you might find that, is there any sort of fracture? No, it's not a fracture. It was deliberately cut, right. So, just the pieces have been kept together to show that where exactly the cut has been put. So this is this is where the cut has been put. Right? That's the cut surf cut. This is the cut. Right? And then we are removing this entire portion. So this time we are removing the back portion. Thick. So then cut has been put and we have removed or we have removed all those transfers process spine that part is removed and now we are watching from the back okay so this what what will be will be able to see will be able to see the posterior longitudinal ligament right just for the orientation this is the body this is right so we have put a cut over here and this time we have removed this and this is where the angle so we will watch this posterior part and that is the posterior longitudinal ligament. Here is the location. Right. So we cut and this is where the just the bones are there and here it is the real dissection. Right. And that's our that's our posterior longitudinal ligament. As it passes the over the vertebral body, right, it will be thin. But when it will be in relation with the intervertebral disc, it would be thicker, right. So you can easily say that this is the body, right, this one is the body. So this uh, posterior longitudinal ligament is thin over here. Here it is thin over here as it crosses the body. But over here, this one is nothing but intervertebral disc, right that is intervertebral disc. 
So when posterior longitudinal ligament is in association with intervertebral disc, it is thickened. It is thickened. These things matter when you actually watch, when you watch any of the sectional radiography, right? At that point, all these points will matter. But just to know that this is how the shape, its shape goes like, right? Vertebral body thin, intervertebral disc thick. Vertebral body thin, intervertebral disc thick. So that's the shape. That's how it goes, right? Okay, there is, see the capsule, this is the intact joint, right? this is the intact posterior joint. So that's the capsule around posterior joint. Now when we say posterior joint, here it makes make things much easier right see this is the posterior joint this one this one that's the posterior joint right this one is the posterior joint right so with respect to that so this posterior joint it has got that strong capsule right for the stability now when we take the cross section right now we take the cross section this is cross section and this cross section is in such a way that the spinal cord is present this is spinal cord with all the structures so that's why we'll be watching it in more detail right we'll zoom it Here it is. So that's our spinal cord. Spinal cord. You can watch gray matter, white matter, everything. Right? As we'll be watching these structures in more detail, this is like anterior and this one is posterior. Can you see one, two, three, four? These are, say, dorsal and ventral. So this is anterior. So here, this would be the ventral root. Correct. Similarly, this one would be the dorsal root. Same way, dorsal and ventral. Achha. To, to take our dissection to next level, first let's let's all of us come on the same page. And when we say that okay, this one, this is our spine, right? And and let's say this is anterior, this one is posterior. It's always like this. Where posterior signals come. So that's, and, and from anterior signals, they go out. So that's why as it goes out, so we'll call it E front, E front, because exit. And all E fronts, they are motor, make sense, right? Because it will be sending impulses to someone, right? Same way over here, these are the afferent. Afferents, they are coming, they are coming from the body, right? So that's why they will be sensory. Now, last time there were few mails about that uh, general somatic, right? Then uh, visceral, spatial, and uh, say general. Then similarly about the afferent, efferent, white remi communicants, gray remi communicants. So I thought of that this time we'll make all these things crystal clear, right? so that you find it very comfortable. Now over here there would be one ganglia right so we'll call this as dorsal root ganglia dorsal root ganglia 
So this is afferent, this is also called as the dorsal root and this one is also called as the ventral root. Right? So we are watching, we are watching this dorsal root and ventral root. So it means that if we go for still further dissection, should we be able to see dorsal root ganglia? Why not? Definitely we'll be able to see. Right? So that's the dorsal root ganglia. Now, over here these fibers and these fibers that is the dorsal root fibers and the and the ventral root fibers collectively what they make is the spinal nerve spinal nerve that's the spinal nerve and this spinal nerve will be coming out of that intervertebral vertebral foramen right and the nerve is out Remember, this thing is not as per scale. This is for the understanding, right? So this one is our dorsal root ganglia. This portion from here to here, right? From here, this is all inside. This is all inside. Inside the spinal column. That's over here. This is all inside. Right? And then when the spinal nerve comes out, the rest of the game starts. That is where the sympathetic ganglia will come into picture. That is where the general somatic afferent, general visceral efferent, all those specials, right? They will come. Then it will divide into the branches, right? dorsal branch and the ventral branch, all those things. We'll see. So far, all good. We add one more point in this. That is after these spinal nerves they come out, right? There is one ganglia. This is sympathetic ganglia. Sympathetic ganglia. So now it is fine because when the whole spine is there and surrounding the spine, those beaded structure which we call that they are that is sympathetic chain. So sympathetic chain is nothing but all those sympathetic ganglia, one after the another, they are connected with each other and they are outside the spine. That's what we see. Right? So it means this particular ganglia is outside the spine. This is this is spine. This is inside, right? From this point onwards, everything is inside. Now we are outside. This ganglia is nothing but it is our entire autonomic nervous system. This is the whole of our enter. ANS. This ANS is having connection with the spinal nerve because that's the spinal nerve, right? So there would be two connections. There would be two connections with this, right? What, what's the name, etc. Hang on, right? We'll see. But because this is sympathetic ganglion, so yes, this is where it would be connected with the organs, right? Which organs? We'll see. However, this our spinal nerve, as it goes further, it gets divided, right? It gets divided. And there is the dorsal, dorsal branch and then there is a ventral branch. So, this dorsal one, it will be supplying to the dorsal part of the body. Ventral will supply to the ventral part of the body, but both of them, this spinal nerve is always mixed. Right? It means it will be carrying fibers for everyone. It will be carrying sympathetic, parasympathetic, right? Which fibers? Well, it will depend upon from which region it is coming up. Right? Let's make things a bit easy. As we said, first part, we are now focusing only on afferent. Right, so afferent was what sensory, right? So sensory was from the backside, right? So this means we are talking about this part, dorsal, thick, dorsal. So this is our dorsal root. Now this afferent sensory, that is those who will be carrying the sensation. Now this is divided into two parts. One would be somatic, thick. 
one would be somatic and second one would be the visceral okay we'll write visceral afterwards depending upon the space so this somatic now we divide it into two parts why two parts because one is general somatic afferent right because then there is there are so there is so much of confusion when we go for the neurophysiology that some is like general somatic afferent special somatic afferent then there are few nuclei which are coming up from then they say they are carrying special somatic afferent then there is general visceral afferent special visceral afferent and then the whole efferent group right this is exactly like an electronic circuit here we are on the receiving end we are re receiving end right think of everything from the perspective of as if you are sitting in the spine right receiving end in spinal cord right you are sitting in the spinal cord and and from the posterior side right there are two parts nt and posterior and from the posterior side signals are coming fibers are coming there would be all cable this is like a conduit this is like a pipe which will be carrying wires for fan wires for for light wires for say ac everything is going via one single pipe and that single pipe is called as the spinal nerve right that spinal nerve its formation is with the dorsal root and the ventral root right now we are focusing only on the dorsal root right in dorsal root in dorsal root there will be few fibers which will be for the body there will be few fibers which will be for the viscera viscera organs right so here it is <coughs> sorry <coughs> so somatic body so general somatic afferent afferent is always sensory that means this is from the general body right so this is sensation sensations from body i am just writing body from the whole body right but then this is general right this is general when we say special special somatic afferent right special somatic afferent now this so special somatic afferent it has to be from some someone very special right that is which where we are getting those impulses so we get our impulse from two one that vision eyes vision right second is say hearing balance and we have got special cranial nerves for that right special cranial nerves for that so vision olfactory first optic optic is the second right so this one is cranial nerve number 2 that is optic and this one would be for hearing and balance right so it was number 8 vestibulo cochlear vestibulo cochlear nerve so they are the part of special somatic afferent very clear sorry so that's about somatic right gsa general somatic afferent from sensations from the body right special somatic afferent they are from the eye and ear right now we move on to say so basically we are just on the receiving end so just remember this part that we are receiving the we are receiving the signals right we are receiving the signals we are right now not sending any of the signals because that would be the part of efferent okay okay so this is done let's pick up the second portion of it so this is somatic and we write it over here this one would be this one would be the visceral right this one would be the visceral in visceral again we divide it into two parts right this time also what we are dealing with is we are dealing with the signals which are coming so signals they are coming this we are divide into general rest is all known visceral afferent because that's what we are dealing with and there would be special visceral afferent so this is general visceral afferent and this is special visceral afferent general visceral afferent nothing special right from all the 
basic system. This is like digestive system, right? Heart, all all those they are sending their their signals. So they will be traveling via GVA. They will be going into the posterior part, and they will be going via the the dorsal root ganglia, and finally they will land into into the spinal cord. From spinal cord, things will go up as per the fibers, right? So this means that when we talk about the optic, that means there would be a specific center where these fibers will be carrying sensations all the way up to the that part, part right? That is the optic cortex. So similarly for the for rest of the nuclei. What about the SVA, right? Again, these are the sensations. These are the sensations. So what about our another sensation that is taste, right? This is the taste. So those taste buds, those taste buds, they will be carried, that is obviously from the tongue, right? From the tongue, they will be carried by these fibers, which is called as the spatial visceral afferent. Another important, when we'll be discussing the hypertension, blood pressure, right? So there is carotid sinus, there is carotid body, right? So which keeps on sending the, because it has got baroreceptors. Baro means pressure. So when they, they are stressed, so they will say, chalo, chalo, let's go and inform the brain, right? So that is carotid sinus and carotid body because that's what will be taking care of our blood pressure system, right? So these are, this, this will be going, there is a special nerve, right? There is a special nerve that is called as the carotid sinus nerve. So why are carotid sinus nerve, it will, it will be sent to the, it will be sent to the brain. But then it tells that that's okay. We have made one carotid sinus nerve. But where is that conduit? Where is that big pipe? That big pipe is that big pipe is cranial nerve nine. So that is the glossopharyngeal nerve, right? Glossopharyngeal nerve. So this is what really happens. All these things collectively, right? Those. Big cranial nerves, they are like big pipelines. And everyone will be sending their own fiber. brain ta kitna message do. Right? So this is how it really goes. Once you have understood this part, right? This part of neurophysio, then rest of the body becomes very easy. Especially when you will start learning all those nuclei. Right? Because everything is so precise as if it is like an electronic circuit. We'll, we'll be requiring few more pages All right. and just give me a second let me let me make more pages duplicate pages duplicate pages okay so we have now enough space so this is about afferent the dorsal root or the sensory part which is the posterior one right and in that all these, whatever we described, right? Whether this is whether this is general somatic afferent, right? Whether this is general somatic afferent, so that means from entire body. Spatial somatic afferent, so that means it is from vision and the and the ear. When it comes to visceral, so general visceral, general name itself is telling general visceral, so that means from digestive system, heart, other organs. When it is special, so then it is very special. It is from taste buds and the carotid sinus, right? That's how all these sensations of the body, whether it is from the surface or it is from the special organs, everything is received at the posterior portion of the spinal cord, right? Via the dorsal root and which is sensory because it is receiving the sensations. Now let's go to the other side, right? So this one would be this one would be the E front, right? This one would be the E front. We are we are going into slightly more detail because this is like now more or less like instead of anatomy, this is like physiology. But what's the fun, right? When we when we start watching that okay, this is white remi communicants, but this is gray remi communicants. But if it is not clear that where exactly what exactly are they doing, so it evaporates. So here, this is efront. Efront means this is anterior. Efront means it is taking the exit, right? If it is exit, that means it will be going to 
going to the body, whether it will be going to the muscles, will be going to the secretory glands or it will be going to the organs, but it is exiting. Exiting means it will be making some changes, it will be making some movements, so that means it is motor, right? And same style, somatic and the visceral here also. Now somatic, this is very sida sada. Simply it will say, okay, uh, my job is to innervate innervate voluntary muscles right so all the muscles of the body right they are carried out right? so it, it that is somatic when it comes to visceral now it is the visceral right so again in this general visceral this time efferent general visceral efferent right so this general visceral efferent it will go to it will go to involuntary muscles right involuntary muscles plus secretory glands secretory glands now if we see kya this is the very small portion remember this gv is nothing but our entire ans entire autonomic nervous system this one fiber GVE because apart from these fibers right they are not handling these ANS functions right they will be just sending the information that this is what is happening into the body awareness but when it comes to real action whether the blood pressure is to be raised or blood pressure is to be dropped right heart rate is to be increased or heart rate to be decreased all those things they are handled by this ANS autonomic nervous system and that is where the GV is considered as the most important portion these fibers right because ANS as we know it has got two parts sympathetic and parasympathetic right sympathetic and parasympathetic and when we say sympathetic and parasympathetic so then how it will differentiate very simple sympathetic is central right so this is like thoraco lumbar right thoraco lumbar so thorax and lumbar that is the region where there is sympathetic but that's why in thorax we'll, we studied that sympathetic chain right so that sympathetic ganglia those beaded appearance all the way they are there right when it comes to parasympathetic in parasympathetic it is above and below right that is that's why it is called as the craniosacral right it is craniosacral so this is where Sorry. This is where that in the cranial part and the sacral part, the parasympathetic functions, they will come into picture. Right? So, it is not so that every level, everyone would come. Huh. And when it comes to, this is visceral, right? General visceral, which is handling ANS. So, then what is the function of special visceral efferent? Right? This is like many times, there is so much of confusion that is spatial visceral efferent. Now this spatial visceral efferent is very interesting. Here, in embryology, we will find that there is something what is called as the pharyngeal arch. Right? This is a super topic, superb topic. That there are formation of multiple pharyngeal arches and from that various structures will start forming. What SVE or the special visceral efferent would do, special visceral efferent, it will be sending, it will be sending, right? It will be sending the innervation to, so here it will be handling muscles of pharyngeal arch, right? That's what it will do. So muscles of pharyngeal arch, they are handled by this special visceral efferent now now it's like it's not like that uh, say these pharyngeal arches so they are all high right so for that there would be special cranial nerves cranial nerves now you know that there are 12 pairs right 12 pairs out of those 12 pairs only few of the cranial nerves, they have got that cranial nerve nuclei which will be handling this portion, right? So, if we see that optic, 
uh, starting with olfactory right for the nose sensation optic eyes olfactory optic oculomotor trochlear right oculomotor trochlear all of them they are they are handling right the the muscles those intraocular muscles right superior oblique is handled by it right rest of the so many muscles by by three oculomotor this number five number five this is trigeminal right this is trigeminal so this trigeminal now cranial now number five will be carrying those fibers which will be for the pharyngeal arch muscles of the pharyngeal arch let's make this thing still more easier that what pharyngeal arch is basically pharyngeal arch those muscles are for your larynx so when you speak your speech is a very higher order thing right so that's why it has got special nuclei and that's why it has got a special section that is the special visceral efferent it is not like moving moving the biceps and triceps no when we are talking right so it is a very higher level of function so that's why the muscles muscles of muscles of larynx right muscles of pharynx right these are all very high level of function then facial expression right facial expression though expression facial expression is under your control but not every time right suddenly if there is a very bad news so then we we become sad career do wicket gir gaye hain right and then we say kar india jeet gaya to right there is a smile all those things they are automatic the moment it is said that are you you scored very good the reactions they are automatic we don't have to say are yaar this is ye to khushi ke samachar hai hai na to chalo smile no it becomes automatic right that's the reason when it is said that when you become very expressive uh i'll say something slightly deviating from the topic on on disney on on hotstar there is uh, a very special program on lata mangeshkar right multiple episodes are there but the sound quality the orchestra that is so amazing and the singers right now when you really watch them that right, smile will come automatically right they are so beautiful so facial expression and the mastication chewing mastication these are all pretty high level of function right why mastication right mastication to chinga muh mein dali chabana shuru no but there, then there is so much in that right so they, these are the functions which will be handling so in other words the moment you know this you will automatically know that which are which cranial nerves will be involved see trigeminal nerve right then five then six six is abduction so that is for the lateral rectus right there are there are six muscles right superior rectus inferior rectus medial rectus lateral rectus superior oblique inferior oblique superior oblique by cranial number number 4 lateral rectus by cranial nerve number 6 and rest all the muscles rest all they are by the oculomotor right so that is down seventh seventh yes this is facial right this is facial see how easy it becomes then after that number 8 comes vestibular cochlear we saw that it is for hearing right so that will not pick right then what next nine glossopharyngeal right this is the glossopharyngeal name itself is telling tongue and and pharynx so glossopharyngeal yes it has it is having that special visceral efferent right special visceral efferent then comes the vagus right all time great right vagus and then the accessory because these are the cranial nerves <clears throat> sorry these are the cranial nerves which will be handling all these larynx pharynx facial expression mastication right and last one that is over here that is the hypoglossal so cranial num <clears throat> cranial nerves number 5 7 9 10 and 11 they are the part of sve special visceral efferent right and all these cranial nerves they have got the specific nuclei in the brain because that's where the signal would start that okay you want to speak this so as per the input as per the input as per the afferent signals right you react right if there is a very beautiful thing 
right so then what would you do you that would be received by this vision right a very beautiful thing that is about special there's a special somatic afferent once that is received brain will analyze and then we'll say karen we need to say something kare wa right so that is where this special visceral efferent they will be coming into picture and will send it right now all these things all these things we need to club together in such a way so that we know that when we how this physiology is associated with the anatomy right that is what now will start so this is like combination will be might need one more page duplicate page ha huh, meantime there was one mail right two mails and i said that though it was explained previously also but i'll explain in very short when we'll be talking about the spine part 2 see don't confuse between neurotransmitters right there are two things very easily right whether it is parasympathetic right whether it is a parasympathetic system or sympathetic system right we just saw right we saw that that there is there is this sympathetic ganglia sympathetic ganglion theek hai so this sympathetic ganglion here is that ganglion so this ganglion the fibers there are few fibers which are before that there are few fibers which are after that there are few fibers which are before that there are few fibers after that so this is called as the preganglionic fibers <clears throat> preganglionic fibers and this is postganglionic fibers post ganglionic right because this is the ganglion always always pre ganglionic whether it is parasympathetic or it is sympathetic the neurotransmitter is only acetylcholine acetylcholine ach remember ach it has got nothing to do with the sympathetic or parasympathetic every time pre ganglionic fibers that means it would be acetylcholine only the game comes when it comes to the post ganglionic part so that means ki it is over over here it is in this portion this portion when it is parasympathetic to again acetylcholine will continue to operate <clears throat> right and who will understand that this is working because in case of parasympathetic there are specific receptors now these receptors they are like nicotinic right nicotinic and muscarinic receptors muscarinic receptors so these are the receptors which are sensitive to acetylcholine and accordingly they will function theek when it comes to postganglionic sympathetic fibers this is where the adrenaline comes into picture adrenaline or norad noradrenaline right which is also called as epinephrine or norepinephrine nor epinephrine so this is only for the post ganglionic right and that's where we have got say their their receptors right in the form of say alpha beta and then we have got alpha 1 alpha 2 beta 1 beta 2 beta 3 right and when we say that yes we have to be very specific when we'll be giving beta recept beta beta blockers right because beta blocker we want to decrease the heart rate right so we'll tell this beta one that yes it is working on the heart right so we'll tell this beta one that i'm blocking you so that you don't tell the heart to beat fast so heart will slow down right but at the same time we don't want to tell anything to beta because if we'll tell beta to that you start working it will go and constrict the bronchus so that's why you remember we said that we have to be using say selective beta blocker right and that's the reason say we are dealing with these these receptors right one one extra thing you is good to know apart from everything right everywhere we say that sympathetic system post ganglionic they are they are like epinephrine adrenaline and noradrenaline but there is only one place which is sympathetic which is post ganglionic but still it is not using adrenaline right that is the sweat glands sweat glands 
right sweat glands these sweat glands they are sensitive to acetylcholine right this is the only exception so do remember this Achha. now as we have talked about this part so let's combine combine both the things right so that is anatomy and physiology only one topic is left out right i think the panchu you asked about that and plus there were two more more friends they asked about that what exactly this white remi and gray remi communicants right see this and and then we you'll get your answer into it right so let's draw all these things in very simple figure so that's our that's that's our spine theek are that's our spine so here it is our front here it is e front that's what it is dorsal root ganglia right dorsal root ganglia this is the dorsal part that's the posterior part this one is the anterior part or the ventral part theek so from here and and we are inside we are inside the inside the spine spinal column so that's how we mark it right this is inside spinal column so both of them they combine and they come out and they come out via this foramen and we'll call this as intervertebral foramen and what has come out it is the spinal now very simple right so nothing very complicated and we understand that this was the sensory portion and this was the motor portion motor to whom sensory to whom no worries right it will come but that's how the spinal nerve will come up now this spinal nerve is having everything in it right? because bus this is the only pipeline which is communicating with the brain with the spinal cord so let's make it slightly bigger this is the only pipeline right so this pipeline will be carrying all general all visceral right all, all general all special visceral somatic everything all khichdi will be going in then the fibers will divide okay, okay sensory portions chalo you go on the back side right this motor ones they will be coming and they'll be joining right so that's how but but the nerve is a nerve that nerve which is going it is having multiple fibers now we make a change here it is right here it is this is what this is the ganglia which one sympathetic ganglia right this is a sympathetic ganglia okay now this <coughs> sorry <coughs> this sympathetic ganglia ganglion there would be say all the way from all the way from right there will be fibers which will be coming all the way from the spinal cord and they will be reaching to they will be reaching to up to the spinal now right now this sympathetic ganglion is connected with a group of fibers right it is connected with group of fibers and this is what will be taking all the way to general visceral right these fibers right they will be going and it will be going to say organs right 
now as we talked about it right these are carrying the sensation so these are general visceral afferent right general visceral afferent now these general visceral afferents they will they are sensory so if we really follow that right they will be going they'll say okay we don't have to do anything we just go we just go we'll go here we'll go here we'll go like this and we'll go and inform am i clear i'm drawing this path again drawing this path again this red one this is afferent afferent is sensory it will go it will go it will go will go via spinal no and it will take the path of the sensory and it will land over here from there the tracks are there and it will go all the way right however this ganglion is connected with the spinal nerve right is connected with the spinal nerve via few fibers now these fibers now listen very carefully these fibers they are two i am telling uh, numbering it 1 and 2 numbering it 1 and numbering it 2 this one is white rami communicants right it is white rami communicants so why white rami because this white rami that color white is because of that there is myelinated fibers as such it is always a combination there are few myelinated few non myelinated but more myelinated so that's why this is white right so white is because of a reason myelinated fiber now what it is carrying what it is carrying see this is carrying pre ganglionic for ganglionic i'm just writing g right so pre ganglionic fibers of sympathetic system easy right quite logical because these are the fibers which are coming over here right so these are pre ganglionic fibers this is the ganglion this sympathetic ganglion this is what is getting calculated that fibers which are before that they are preganglionic fibers which are after that they are postganglionic okay so preganglionic of sympathetic system right they are going over there right so here it is connecting this is anterior right so this is connecting the anterior part of the spinal cord with the sympathetic ganglion so far all fine next about the two this second one second one this is call as the gray rami gray rami communicants gray rami communicants now gray rami communicants they are the post ganglionic fibers they are the post ganglionic fibers and they are gray because they are non myelinated right they are non myelinated so the point is when we if i just remove this right and just draw it like to make it simple there are fibers there are fibers which are pre ganglionic and then from ganglion once again they are connected over here right and let's make it this ha huh. so this is pre ganglionic and this one is the post ganglionic fibers pre ganglionic and post ganglionic right which are rejoining the spine then then there is formation of sympathetic sympathetic chain right and via that chain all the distributions and everything goes right but the fibers which are connecting from spine to ganglia the preganglionic fibers they are called as white rami communicants 
the fibers which are coming out of the ganglion and they are rejoining, right? The word is rejoining, rejoining spine. They are called as the gray rami communicants, right? They are non-myelinated. So that's the game. That's the whole game, right? And then, obviously, the spinal nerve, right? Spinal nerve is continuing. Then spinal nerve, it divides, right? It divides into dorsal branch, dorsal branch and the ventral branch. And that's the reason that when you'll be learning the plexuses, at that point, it is said that, okay, from these roots, the anterior branch or the ventral branch, it is forming these plexus, right? Because dorsal branch, they will be supplying the dorsal part of the body, ventral branch will be supplying the ventral part of the body, right? So that's how they are all distributed. Dorsal branches, yeah, they, they'll be taking care of the back, back muscles, back muscles, right? Ventral branch, rest. So that's how the whole system actually works. Right? So see, when we see this, right now it makes things much interesting, right? That this is like our dorsal and this is our ventral root, right? Same way on the opposite side. Uh, there is lots of stuff yet to come, right? So don't worry. Late, we'll, we'll try to cover it later again, revise it again later. Right? See, this is now another concept is that our brain, it has got three layers, so as the spine. So it is called as the dura matter, arachnoid matter, and the pia matter. Pia matter, dura arachnoid and the pia. Dura means something which is durable, which is durable, which is tough, right? And pia means it is close, right? So this is brain and the spinal cord, they are close, right? They are close. The pia matter is immediately covering it. So this is the spinal cord and the and the pia matter, it is covering it. Then there would be the arachnoid matter, right? And then there would be that tough one, and that is the dura matter. This, what we are holding over here, is the dura matter. Dura, right? So see the whole, whole spinal cavity, right? It is layered with this tough structure, this tough structure, this tough structure, this tough structure, which is inside, that is the dura matter, right? And here it is. So this is dura, correct? This is dura matter. There is a very fine, this particular layer, that is the, which is very loosely attached, very lightly attached, right? And you can peel, peel it off very easily. That is the arachnoid matter. This is the arachnoid layer, right? Arachnoid matter or layer. So that is the arachnoid. And yes, it is very loosely attached, very lightly attached. Can easily just hold it and you pull, it will peel off. Right? Now spinal cord, when as we said that it is covered by this pia matter, right? Here it is. So see, this is dura. This is dura. This one is arach, arachnoid right arachnoid matter and this what we are just trying to lift but it is so firmly attached right this is the pia matter right firmly attached now we know that there is csf right cerebrospinal fluid just remember, cerebrospinal fluid is into subarachnoid space under the arachnoid, right? So here it is that when we say that this portion will be the CSF, cerebrospinal fluid, it is into sub 
arachnoid space so when you you want to take the csf out right when you want to take the csf out you have to actually pierce the dura matter right you have to actually pierce the dura matter and then you are piercing subarachnoid this arachnoid and now you are into the subarachnoid space which is and then you don't have to go all the way to the spinal cord right you can take it over here this is the subarachnoid space which is filled with cerebrospinal fluid right so here it is that's the csf in the subarachnoid space right so here is the dura here is the arachnoid here is the pia and this is the csf so sub arachnoid under the arachnoid right here is the spinal cord here is the spinal cord now if we say that if that is the thing so then what about the space which is just underneath the dura now that is the epidural space okay uh, let me let's let's dissect it right but this would be the space right that is this would be the space now normally it is filled with fat the blood vessels but yes so if we if we cut the dura matter should we be able to see the blood vessels right we'll see right. so we just write we just write it over here that will be there would be fat and the important is blood vessels right blood vessels is what we should be expected to watch okay so here is now we are about to cut right see this is this is where the spinal cord is kept intact right and here the spinal cord it is covered with dura matter right it is covered we have not even touched the dura matter so covered by dura okay. now we split open right so all you have to do is it is a tough structure hold it and just put the incision and it will just open split open and here it is see the dura we have just put the cut over here and here and it is it is opened so this is dura split open <coughs> sorry <coughs> right and we see the blood vessels right we see the blood vessel because just now we said and this is this is the spinal cord right that's the spinal cord with the blood vessels seen now about the spinal cord when we have got the entire vertebral canal right only it is up to upper two third if all the way right from cervical to sacrum right, coccyx the vertebral canal but only up to upper upper two third region we have got this spinal cord right after that it is that cauda equina right all those fibers and we'll 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 dissect all the way up to that point so here is the spinal cord <clears throat> few interesting things see this is just the zoomed portion right so where we see that these are the blood vessels how nicely it is seen we watch one very important structure over here and normally it becomes very difficult to watch see the dura matter is tough right dura matter is tough so then there are few projections from the spinal cord right and they will be going towards the dura matter Right. they will be going towards the dura matter where are the blood vessels actually located they you tell me right it is crystal clear seen in front because that's what we talked over here right this we have just opened the we have just opened this dura matter right so this is into epidural space just underneath the dura that's where the blood vessels are okay na? right see the dura covered we cut the dura 
blood vessels are out right you can see the blood vessels <clears throat> so now that's obviously obviously the cut is absolute it's we have whether superficial or deep right the thing is that we have cut the bones and then we are into this into this cavity that is the vertebral canal and in that this is the spinal cord this spinal cord is covered with dura mater and we have just put a cut put a small nick and we have split open the dura to watch the structures which are inside inside the dura right just underneath the dura and that's where we saw the blood vessels right okay what i was about to talk over here is you need to see these triangular structures this this right then this these are called as the denticulate ligaments right they are called as the denticulate like teeth denticulate ligaments what they are think of dura is tough under spinal cord to is extremely soft very delicate right so from pia mater things go towards the dura piercing arachnoid and these are the projections right which are giving stability to the dura mater uh, to the to the spinal cord right to the spinal cord so that is for stability stability so i'll just write down these are like triangular projections right triangular projections from via to dura right these are the structures this is how it looks like this one right this one so because we have opened we have opened the dura mater that's why we are seeing this structures because obviously right this is from pia to dura so it would be inside only right it would be inside only okay <clears throat> and now this is a complete zoom thing from the spinal cord this is the spinal cord right and we have removed the posterior portion so this is what we are watching this is the dorsal root dorsal root right? because we are watching from the back and this is the ventral root right this one so ventral root but the point is that both of them they are combining <clears throat> to form the spinal nerve right they will combine to form the spinal nerve now then the direction is very specific right this is when it is in cervical region right cervical region well we are about to come to a very interesting fact so that's the direction of these spinal nerves right as you go down yeah as you go down this is in thoracic region right this is thoracic region immediately you will notice that now the direction is becoming more angular right it is becoming more oblique as compared to where this is quite horizontal right this is quite horizontal cervical region and compare it with over here so here in this lower portion over to here it is almost very oblique right very oblique it would happen like this because spinal cord is not for the entire length so initially it would be same but as the length would shorten so those nerves they have to go lower to to come out from where it, they were supposed to come out right say t12 it has to thoracic 12 spinal nerve should come out from the intervertebral foramen formed by the thoracic 12 vertebra right but when the spinal cord is short not to its fullest length so lower vertebras their intervertebral foramen will be lower so that's why they have to travel long right these their spinal nerves they have to travel long so see this is how it works that's the point where the spinal cord ends right see spinal cord ends and then 
all these fibers right which are going down that is called as the coda equina coda equina those bunch of nerves which will be going out and then they will keep on coming out from their respective locations right see right see they are becoming more and more more and more oblique as they go down you know see as they go down now let's follow a spinal nerve right so this is now you know the structure right and we now know that these are the roots right these are the roots these are the roots of spinal nerve and watch how the spinal nerve is coming out this is this one this one right this is pretty zoomed so this entire part this one is the big one spinal nerve right see over here this one is the spinal nerve right so they are spinal nerves and coming out of intervertebral foramen See? now we do some fine work right we just remove vertebral structures <clears throat> right vertebral structures removed to and and we have saved the entire entire nerve right so here it is that's the spinal cord right you are about to see something superb this is this one is the ventral root ventral root over here over here that's the dorsal root and the big bulge which you see over here this is the dorsal root ganglion and this entire assembly is hidden underneath it is inside it is inside the spine because we have broken we have removed all these vertebral components to save this portion so that's the dorsal root ganglion this bulge right fair enough so it is this spinal now now same structure right but now we are watching it from an angle see the dorsal root ganglion so beautiful right see this one that is the dorsal root ganglia right so this one is ventral root this one is the dorsal root right dorsal root and the ventral root fine so that's how they emerge from intervertebral foramen right so this is the nerve see this one this big one big one so it is a, coming from intervertebral foramen now when it comes out right when it comes out when this nerve comes out so it divides right we talked about it that it divides it divides into as this nerve comes out it divides into two part dorsal and ventral or posterior or anterior right this is what we see over here right see the file this can you can you just see say this is the nerve which is coming out and then one now going like this and this one going like this right i'll zoom it so that you appreciate this one 
is our spinal nerve and see here one going like this and this whole assembly is continuing like this right now I remove it watch it and if we unzoom it you'll be able to appreciate it still more clear right that's the thing this one this is dorsal ramus right also call as whether you call it a dorsal ramus or you call as a posterior ramus primary ramus posterior primary ramus is all same right and this one rest of the portion that is the anterior primary ramus right or or the ventral or the ventral So when we say that there are various plexuses, right? Various plexuses. Say one of the very important plexus which we'll study in in upper limb that would be the brachial plexus. And in brachial plexus description, it would be written like that it is from C5 to T1, but then there would be clearly mentioned that is from the anterior rami, right? Anterior rami or ventral rami, right? Anterior rami. And at times we don't give much attention to that. Right? We just remember C5 to T1. No, no, no. It is anterior rami of C5 to T1 is what, com what is comprising of brachial plexus. Right? Similarly, when in abdomen you will be dealing with the lumbar plexus. Right? Lumbar, sacral plexus, lumbosacral plexus. Right? So again, same thing will come. That it is from L1 to S3 and anterior rami right so that's how it would be mentioned so when they say anterior rami so it carries the meaning right? so that's how <coughs> sorry so that's how things they really go oh, need pages need pages now there is one very interesting thing There is complete injustice to one of the nerve. Right? There is so much of injustice to one nerve. So we'll talk about that now. So here in say cervical region, right? In cervical region, this is C1, that's C2. So, here is C1, spinal nerve, right? Spinal nerve takes its name from vertebra which is just below it. So, when we say C1, so name as per vertebra below it. This is true only in the cervical region. Right. So, same way over here, over here, which vertebra is below C2, so we'll call it C2. This is C2. Right. Things are good, no complications. When it comes to, when it comes to thoracic region, right. when it comes to thoracic region, things change in case of thoracic region. In thoracic region, the spinal nerve takes the name from the vertebra which is above it. So here it is T1, here it is T2, right? So then over here, over here, over here, over here, this will call it T1 because vertebra above it name as per vertebra above it. So this is above is T1. So this is T1. For this one T2, T2 because it is the vertebra which is above is T2. Okay. So far things are fine. 
what would happen now is a royal confusion right let's draw very quickly right this is c1 this is c2 c3 c4 c5 how many <clears throat> this is c6 right c7 seven cervical and then then let's go for this is t1 and t2 but this much is sufficient this much is fine and we now start drawing the what say spinal nerves this is c1 this is c2 this is c3 this is c4 this is c5 this is c6 this is c7 things are good right what about what about the thoracic thoracic will say no our nomenclature is name as per vertebra which is above me right above me so then what will happen in case of thorax right thoracic it will say vertebra this now it will say vertebra above me is t1 so my name is t1 right then my above is t2 so things will go fine right the trouble with this gentleman who is coming out of here right he'll say who am i right now from the thoracic aspect you'll say in that case so my name would be t0 right no t0 can't be there nothing can be done so this is and and c7 to c7 to has already been taken t1 has already been taken so that's why this part right this one this one it is called as the c8 so remember there are seven cervical vertebra but the number of spinal nerves they are c8 because of this very interesting rule right this is the small adjustment for the nomenclature right for c8 there is for c8 there is no corresponding corresponding vertebra vertebra right so just remember this small thing so that's it for today right do revise do go through this thing bit properly and especially the somatic and visceral sympathetic and parasympathetic right so see you tomorrow thank you so much right. and take care and I'm putting this thing into our shared folder. Okay. Uh, revise the somatic and visceral cello. Let's do it. Let's do it. Do it. Do it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we have afferent and the efferent that is the sensory and the motor right so this is the direction that's the direction this is the direction so from backside signals come from outside uh, anterior signals they go out this entire game that is dorsal root ganglia that is inside the the spinal canal right and once we say come out of this right there is sympathetic ganglia We have got afferent. Afferent means it is group of all the signals, all the signals which are on the receiving end. That is sensory, that is dorsal. We are on the receiving end in the spinal cord. That is, it is the posterior part. In somatic, right? In somatic, we have, that is for the body. General somatic afferent. Afferent is sensory. So general somatic, so that is sensations from the entire body. Simple as that, right? The normal sensations. But from the spatial Special somatic afferent, we have got vision and the hearing and balance. So that is number two, which is for optic, optic nerve, which goes all the way to the optic cortex, right? That is 
and the hearing and balance that is the vestibulo cochlear that is the cranial nerve number eight right done right regarding the visceral part in the visceral again there is general and the special in the general there is digestive system heart rest of the body right but in case of special visceral afferent tongue taste buds and the carotid sinus and body they are just sending the sensation that this is sweet this is tasty this is not tasty vagera vagera right all those things and carotid sinus and carotid body they have got the baroreceptor so if they are stressed they will just send the signal ke boss i am stressed right brain would understand that if this is the signal coming from this carotid sinus that means the blood pressure is more let me send messages to our sympathetic office right and then it will start working on it so here it is via carotid sinus and it goes into via glossopharyngeal nerve so that's the game of receiving centers when it comes to efferent part efferent means now we are now we are taking action so this is anterior so this means this is motor in motor there is somatic in somatic it is just general innervate voluntary muscles all those voluntary muscles right so straight away start sending them the motor signals and they contract they are under our control obviously voluntary for the visceral part right there is there is something which is totally different for visceral there is gve general visceral efferent general visceral efferent it means it is involuntary muscles plus secretory glands right all those but that's our ans autonomic nervous system so this autonomic nervous system whether it will be sympathetic or parasympathetic well it depends upon the location thoraco lumbar that is the region where those those will be the sympathetic part above and below Craniosacral, that is the parasympathetic, right? When it comes to special visceral efferent, these are the special visceral efferents. They are motor, right? When they are motor, this is for those pharyngeal arches, muscles which are developing from the pharyngeal arches, pharyngeal arch. which muscles we are talking about well they are for larynx pharynx facial expression and the muscles of mastication these are the muscles which has been given a special privilege in the form of special visceral efferent there would be a special visceral efferent and they are handling cranial nerve number 5 number 7 number 9 number 10 and number 11 trigeminal facial glossopharyngeal vagus and accessory out of all 12 pairs of <laughs> cranial nerves when we talk about ganglion all the preganglionic fibers they are acetylcholine sympathetic or parasympathetic and the postganglionic in case of parasympathetic are acetylcholine and the postganglionic of sympathetic they are adrenaline noradrenaline that is epinephrine norepinephrine depending upon their receptors right finally when we deal with when we deal with sympathetic chain sympathetic ganglion the fibers which are preganglionic right fibers which are preganglionic preganglionic fibers right from from the afferent part right preganglionic afferent fibers they are white rimai communicants postganglionic right they are gray rimai communicants white and gray just because of their color right and that color is due to white is myelinated and gray is non myelinated as such it is a combination of myelinated and non myelinated but over here myelinated are more and over there non myelinated they are more right so that's how say things really go so that's it for today Thank you so much and see you tomorrow bye bye